Hello everyone, Ron Johnson from LTL Tutoring Central. And if you're looking for tips and strategies to help with your learning, you are in the right place. Now today I'm actually doing a video called Story Time, and I'm going to be doing a series of story times in which I'm reading a short story. We did a few lives before for uh, reading and listening and writing. Uh, it, it's a little bit like that, except in this case, I'm simply reading a, a short story. Uh, these will be short stories. Today's one by uh, Canadian author Stephen Leacock. And you can just sit back, close your eyes and listen to the story to practice your listening skills. Or you can follow along. I'm going to put the text up on the screen in just a moment as I read aloud the story. And then after the story, I'll make a few comments and maybe look at some of the writing. I haven't read this story or I haven't read it for a long time. I didn't look at it. I just looked at the size. It's a very, very short story. I've read a lot of Stephen Leacock. He's a, a very, he's an excellent writer and he's a humorous writer. Of course, he's no longer uh, with us now, but uh, He's a very interesting author. I think you will enjoy the story. So you can follow along. You, I also would be very interested in your comments uh, or questions. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can leave them below. Otherwise, you can check out the uh, website or my email and send me a message in that way. I will put links for those below the video. All right, so let me just share my screen. And we can begin with the story called The New Food by Stephen Leacock. I see from the current columns of the Daily Press that Professor Plum of the University of Chicago has just invented a highly concentrated form of food. All the essential nutritive elements are put together in the form of pellets, each of which contains from one to 200 times as much nourishment as an ounce of an ordinary article of diet. These pellets diluted with water will form all that is necessary to support life. The professor looks forward confidently to revolutionizing the present food system. Now, this kind of thing may be all very well in its way, but is going to have its drawbacks as well. In the bright future anticipated by Professor Plum, we can easily imagine such incidents as the following. The smiling family were gathered round the hospital board. The table was plenteously laid with a soup plate in front of each beaming child, a bucket of hot water before the radiant mother, and at the head of the board, the Christmas dinner of the happy home, warmly covered by a thimble and resting on a poker chip. The expectant whispers of the little ones were hushed as the father, rising from his chair, lifted the thimble and disclosed a small pill of concentrated nourishment on the chip before him. Christmas turkey, cranberry sauce, plum pudding, mince pie, it was all there, all jammed into that little pill and only waiting to expand. Then the father with deep reverence and a devout eye alternating between the pill and heaven, lifted his voice in a benediction. At this moment, there was an agonized cry from mother. Oh, Henry, quick, baby has snatched the pill. It was too true. Dear little Gustavus Adolphus, the golden haired baby boy had grabbed the whole Christmas dinner off the poker chip and bolted it. 350 pounds of concentrated nourishment passed down the esophagus of the unthinking child. Clap him on the back, cried the distracted mother. Give him water. The idea was fatal. The water striking the pill caused it to expand. There was a dull rumbling sound. And then with an awful bang, Gustavus Adolphus exploded into fragments. And when they gathered the little corpse together, the baby lips were parted in a lingering smile that could only be worn by a child who had eaten 13 Christmas dinners. Okay, there you have it, a very short story by Stephen Leacock, a little bit of dark humor there in a sense, uh, at the end at least. If you had any difficulty understanding the story, let me know. It's just a humorous take on some of the modern, of course, this was written a long time ago, but we're still looking at, at people and institutions coming up with various ways of eating 
food that's not food, <laughs> tablets, pills, vitamins, concoctions, rather than actually eating food. And of course, he's taking it to the extreme. And that's often used in humor. You, you take a, a core or you take an element of something, and then you imagine taking that to the extreme or to the outer edge and, and what would happen. That's also used in dystopian uh, literature, but in a slightly different way, of course. In this one, in, in humor, it's also uh, very much like a caricature. So a caricature is a, a drawing of a, usually a person, but it can be other things, but usually it's a person, often a politician or a celebrity. And what they do is they pick one element usually, or a couple of elements of that person. So maybe he or she has a slightly larger than average nose. Well, when they draw the caricature, they give the person a huge nose just to exaggerate it and, and supposed to make it funny. I'm not sure if they always think it's funny or not, but often they do. It's just intended to be humorous. So what Leacock has done is concentrated food into a one little tiny tablet and he's, he's put numerous Christmas dinners into this one little tiny tablet. And uh, so you can think of it as any kind of feast that you might have all going to be in this one little pill or this one little tablet that will, or pellet, I think he calls it pellet, that will expand when you, when you put it in water or dilute it into water. And it's called, he's called it a revolutionary food system. And of course, then you have the happy scene, the smiling family, and everyone's gathered around the, the table. It could, in this case, it's Christmas, but it could be any festival, any feast that you would be having. Uh, and everybody, of course, is ready to celebrate and enjoy the dinner. Uh, I think there's a certain amount of humor here as well, in the sense that would you really be as excited uh, about unveiling your dinner from a thimble? You know, a thimble is a, usually a little piece of hard plastic or metal that you would wear on your thumb to protect you from a sewing needle. I don't know how many people are still sewing by hand these days, <laughs> but would that be as exciting as having a, a Christmas turkey or a big ham or, or any kind of large dinner with all the food and trimming, trimmings on the table. In this case, you have one little pellet underneath one little thimble on top of a poker chip, which is very small. <laughs> so it's, it's again humorous to think, would you really be that excited? Would it really be the same sort of celebration? Everything crammed into that tablet, the turkey, the sauce, the pudding, the pie, and then the father with deep reverence, meaning very seriously uh, and very uh, considerate of his family uh, and looking up to, to heaven as well, thankful for the food, thankful for the great feast that they are about to have. Except, of course, that poor little Gustavus has uh, grabbed the, the pill, the tablet, the pellet, whatever you want to call it. And in this case, they say the pill, and he has swallowed it. And mother, in her panic, uh, tries to clap him on the back and then give him water. Water is the worst thing she could have done under these circumstances because water is what makes the pill expand and turn into apparently 13 Christmas dinners. So the, the, the baby explodes basically. <laughs> and uh, a lingering smile. Well, maybe happy for that last moment of being able to enjoy 13 Christmas dinners all at once. I'm not really sure how much. Uh, how, how happy one would be, <laughs> but, but that's, that's the joke at the end. Okay, so a little bit of humor and a little bit of uh, satire, I guess, to uh, sort of commenting on some of the, I'm going to stop the share here, commenting on some of the new fads or, or new ideas around food, eating, and diet. I know that Leacock has written, uh, I think I actually read one of his stories for my life as well. Uh, about living to uh, 200 years old, I think it was, and uh, e explaining all the exercise fads and, and uh, diet fads to some extent in that one as well. So he sort of looked at that a few times uh, in his writing and talking about some of these that uh, they will be helpful to a point, but then he exaggerates them to, well, let's not put too much credence in everything new and everything different because sometimes there's something to be said for eating a real Christmas dinner or real food rather than just swallowing a tablet. Okay, if you have other questions, and you might from the story, if there are phrases, words, 
or ideas that you're not entirely clear on, let me know and I will try to explain them either in another video or I can just answer you uh, in the comment section or by email if you send me an email. I will put links below. Don't forget about my book that's up on Amazon. It's called Teach Myself, Teach Myself. So it's uh, both a question and an exclamation. So it explains uh, in uh, relatively easy detail how to be your own best teacher. Because when it comes down to it, you are your own best teacher. It's really up to you how much you're going to learn and how you're going to learn. You can have excellent teachers in your life and professors and tutors and uh, brothers and sisters, and everyone can help you uh, to learn and you can use those resources to help you. But when it comes right down to it, you're ultimately teaching yourself. So, so this little book is meant to help you. So check it out. You can do a title search. I will uh, put a link below as well to the book. It's Ron Johnson from LTL Tutoring Central. I want you to keep learning and keep having fun. Until next time, bye-bye for now.